Well, we're going to talk about social media and how to use it to build strong relationships in more detail a little bit later in the course. I wanted to talk a little bit about relationship building in the online environment and the use of social media to help accomplish that. First, a little note uh, on the distinction between online and face-to-face -face relationship building. Remember that we had talked about the idea of financial, social, and structural bonds, and it's easy to create financial bonds and structural bonds in an online environment, but the social bonds are perhaps more difficult to develop and maintain over time. The fact of the matter is that online communications using emails, etc., are not very personal and as a result, not very social in their nature. However, you might note, and, you, and the pandemic has certainly increased this um, and ac accelerated this process, but most companies are trying to drive their customers to the internet. This is sort of an interesting concept since, or an interesting decision since, um, I believe you can build stronger relationships in a, in a more face-to-face -face, um, environment. And I think that that's one of the major mistakes that department stores are making right now is that they are not working to build their social bonds in store. Uh, but most companies are trying to drive their customers to the internet. Take, for instance, someone like Wells Fargo. Uh, they hate to have me come into their bank. They always tell me, you know, you could have done this online. And they always tell me it would be cheaper and quicker and better if you did this online. So most companies are trying to drive their customers to the internet. And it's not just banks. There are lots and lots of companies that are examples of this. So why are they doing this? Well, first off, it's cheaper. It's always cheaper to have people uh, um, interact with your company online. It's automated. And as a result, um, it, is, it tends to be less expensive in terms of overhead costs. Secondly, it results in fewer errors. In addition, it's easier to collect data and it's easier to build a database from your online transactions because you automatically uh, record them a, on an individual basis. And it's cheaper. And it's faster. And it's trackable. And it's cheaper. And so most companies are interested in driving their customers to the internet because it is less expensive for them to do business and make the transactions in that environment. However, that may be a little bit short-sighted since I believe that you lose some of the opportunities to create relationships and strong bonds that you have in a uh, that you have in a um, uh, in a in a face-to-face -face environment. Uh, so it is very difficult to build those social bonds when communicating exclusively or mostly online. It's not personal. It's more community-based. It's not customized. Think about email blasts. It's often not engaging. Uh, it's often not emotional. And it's really typically not about building relationships. When we get to an online environment, the, uh, the, 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 the switch for most companies is to become more transactional and less relational. So how do you use uh, social bonds in an online environment? So how do you build those social bonds? Well, some of the tools that you have available are obviously email, websites, online ads, and social media platforms. Um, uh, and of course, uh, the whole idea is um, uh, when you think about building social bonds in an online environment is part of this is making the social media social and not a selling an advertising channel. Perhaps you do this by doing more storytelling. Of course, uh, we'll discuss this more in a future lecture. It's all about engaging the customers in the online environment and providing relevant, valuable, timely information. <clears throat> Social media is often considered to be one of the most important components of relationship building online. And there are lots and lots of academic articles on that topic. Uh, and of course, the argument is that the social media sites make it fast and easy for companies to communicate information to their customers. 
Uh, but of course, in order to make long-term relationships, the company has to keep their customers, has to get their customers to become regular followers on their on their social media um, platforms. I, um, I'm not a regular uh, follower of any company on their social media platform, so um, I'm I'm not sure whether or not that's true. But it goes way beyond that. Uh, the, what I have here is a chart from Marketing Profs uh, illustrating the reasons that customers choose to like a company's Facebook page. Now, we understand that likes is not a, uh, is not a very strong um, measure of relationships, um, and, but it is this notion of why people would at least visit a company's Facebook page. And you might note here that most customers do not elect to follow a company out of mere curiosity. Mere curiosity. Now, understand that liking a company is not the same as following a company. All right. But let's, but, you know, and, and, and of course, um, the whole point behind this article was look at how you can build a customer relationships using social media platforms. But that's not really what this chart is showing you. Let's take a little closer look at this chart. Say, so what motivated you? to like a company on Facebook. Number one reason, to receive discounts. Uh, number two reason, to show support for the company. Number three, to get free offers. Number four, to stay informed. Number five, to get product updates. Number six, to get sales updates. For entertainment, exclusive content, uh, because of personal recommendations, to learn about the company, I educate myself about the company's topics and then to interact with the company. Now, notice that two of the three uh, top reasons are to get something financial from the company. And a third of the top four is to get information from the company. All right. And so um, none of those top um, um, aspects are really about customer engagement and building relationships with customers. So while people visit social media platforms, my view is that most marketers aren't thinking about how they could actually use social media to strengthen and build stronger relationships. Instead, most companies are using their social media platform as a advertising and sales tool. Social media needs, yeah, so, so if you're going to use social media as part of your relationship marketing programs, the social media needs to, needs to be used to engage customers in a meaningful and relevant way. Um, my argument is that database-driven relationship marketing experts probably have a better understanding of the role of social media as a way to build relationships with customers. You cannot use it as an advertising and promotions medium. And so you have to ask yourself, how does a company use this medium to get close to its customers? Well, there'll be more about that later on in the course. But I wanted to get you to start to think about social media and how it is involved in building relationships in the online environment.